Hello everyone and welcome. Beside me is the 2021 Porsche 911 Targa 4S. And so this is for the buyer that wants the new 8th generation Porsche 911, but they can't decide between the convertible and the hardtop. So there's really two cool things about the Targa. First of all, the roof comes off. That's cool. Second of all, it has this giant piece of glass in the back. Here's the deal, I'm a big fan of big glass and it seems so often on modern cars we've decided that glass is no longer aesthetically pleasing. So we make the windows and the windshields as tiny as possible and we have this super sleek modern looking car except the thing is the driver can't see anywhere and I really appreciate when companies can combine a big piece of glass like we see right here with a car that is also aesthetically pleasing because visibility does matter and it should matter and you should be able to see what's behind you when you're driving. Another cool thing about this Targa is how the roof comes off. So I'll admit, when Porsche first delivered this for me to check out, I assumed that there were some mechanical latches. I pick up the top, I stick it in the back, easy peasy. Well, it's actually way easier than that. So actually what happens is you hold this little button on the key, the windows roll down, the back folds back, that fine piece of glass, and then your roof just slides back there and it all comes neatly together. And you don't have to touch a thing except for this button on the key. Beautiful. Let's talk about price. It's a Porsche, you know it's expensive. The Cabriolet 4S and the Targa 4S both actually start at the same price, about $135,000. As equipped, however, what we are looking at is just over $180,000, which actually puts it $10,000 past the starting price of 911 Turbo. Now, personally, I'm probably gonna go for more power uh, than more features if it were my money. However, that said, I mean, I guess there's a point at which, you know, you don't need any more horsepower. No, there's not. Speaking of power, let's have a peek at the engine. Oh, well. That's not, there's just a, there's just a big hole, but plenty of space for your stuff. Sorry for being stupid. Everyone knows Porsche engines are in the back. So let's have a peek at this boxer engine. Wait, seriously, where is it? Found it. So I wanted to say under the hood, but I guess it's more accurate to say under the car is a three liter twin turbo boxer six cylinder producing 443 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque. It now has larger turbos and they incorporate a clever trick with the camshafts. So what they used to do is at low load, low RPM, they had one profile and then at high load, higher RPMs, so you had a different profile with more lift so you could get more air into the engine, make more power. Well, now what they do, instead of that 3.6 millimeter equal lift, on the low end, they actually have asymmetrical valve lift for the two valves for the intake during low RPM operation. So one valve lifts to two millimeters, the other valve lifts to 4.5 millimeters. And this helps improve the mixing within the cylinder, improving fuel consumption and emissions during those low RPM operations. Of course, once you want full power, it switches over to equal higher lift for both valves and you get full torque. The engine comes with a dry sump oil system and I've got to give a shout out to the folks at Mobile One. They've been awesome partners and sponsors of Engineering Explained and this is yet another car that's factory filled with Mobile One along with a long list of other Porsches. In this case, the three liter twin turbo is using 0W40. All right, so what's this thing like to drive? And I think initially I need to just say something about that rear uh, window because I like the idea of how giant it is and having good rear visibility. The thing is, it's up really high. So looking through the mirror, it's fine because the mirror is mounted high, so you can see back behind you just fine. But looking back, as if you were backing up or something like that, and you're trying to look at your surroundings, you really don't see much turning around and looking back that direction. I'm also fairly tall looking back here, so uh, rear visibility isn't as amazing, I feel like, as it could be. Uh, the rear really comes up really high. Looking out the front, looking out the sides, excellent visibility, which is generally the case with with most of the Porsche 911s out there, so visibility overall is a good story. Now, Porsche has made some exciting changes to the transmission for the eighth 
generation 911. So it is now an eight-speed dual clutch instead of a seven-speed dual clutch. And the good news is the gearing is more aggressive in gears one through seven. So every single gear one through seven is shorter than the previous seven speeds transmission, but eighth gear is now taller than the previous seventh gear. And so you get this nice highway cruiser gear with eighth, and then you get these nice aggressive gears one through seven. And really one through six are your aggressive gears. And so top speed, you actually hit in sixth gear, not seventh or eighth, which is fantastic. So it's nice to have those nice aggressive gear ratios. You know, seconds only topping out at 65, which I feel like is fantastic. This thing has excellent torque. It's got good response. Really don't, uh, it's not super obvious that it is turbocharged when you put your foot down. You don't have a super long delay and when you get the torque, which is very impressive. And the shifting speed, also very good. So classic Porsche dual clutch, very fast shifts, especially when you're driving aggressively. And one of the other things that I really like about this transmission is low speed control is actually really good. So one of the problems a lot of dual clutch transmissions have is that low speed inching control and it feels kind of jerky. This does a nice job at real low speeds, just inching along in first gear. So I like the way that they make it feel almost like an automatic uh, transmission with a torque converter when you're at real low speeds and it doesn't have that shaky feel that some dual clutch transmissions tend to have. Another exciting piece of the story with the transmission is that they offer as a no cost option a seven speed manual with the Targa 4S. So thank you Porsche for still keeping the manual transmission alive while folks like uh, Chevy with a Corvette, Ford with the GT500, Toyota with the Supra are all like, now nah, we're just gonna do automatic. It is fantastic that Porsche is keeping the manual alive. Now this car isn't particularly light. It's coming in just under 3,700 pounds. However, keep in mind that it is all wheel drive. And even with that heft, zero to 60 with launch control happens in 3.4 seconds. So put your foot down. <laughs> Yeah, you've got fantastic response and plenty of speed. Now here's something rather unique and interesting about the 8th generation 911. It has something called wet mode, and part of this wet mode is that it, the car has acoustic sensors up in the front wheel wells to detect when it's going through deep water. And so it uses that to alter the traction control and the stability control if it sees that you're driving through water. Now my favorite part about this is that apparently if you run over a puddle, it says, hey, by the way, you're driving over water. And you know, it's great that it indicates that you and it tells you, hey, you should put it in wet mode, but it's kind of like, okay, if you're driving over water and you don't realize it, is, is your car what indicated to you that you were driving over water? Like that to me is a little wild, but either way, cool that they have a, a system set up that detects water on the road. Porsche says it's a world first as far as actually detecting large amounts of water on the road, and then it uses that to change the stability and traction control to make sure that you don't get out of hand. So overall driving dynamics, one of the things I've been the most surprised by in driving this is just how comfortable it is. It is an insanely smooth, comfortable ride. Sure, the road that I'm on isn't all that terrible, but even still, uh, everywhere that I've been going on this thing, it surprises me how comfortable the suspension is. They have done a fantastic job with the chassis tuning as far as the comfort level. And of course, you know, you have that steering response that is fantastic. The brake pedal short travel, great modularity to it. Uh, the throttle pedal, again, like it's it's very well connected. It doesn't feel like a turbocharged engine from a response level, but it certainly feels like a turbocharged engine from a torque level. And so it is, it is an impressive machine. I have to give them credit. I mean, almost everything about the driving dynamics is exceptional. When you start thinking about, you know, this is a $180,000 car that I'm sitting in. It's like, are you getting your money's worth? And I think part of it is that from a speed standpoint, there is plenty out there that allows you to feel the acceleration that you will feel in this for far less money. But from a refinement standpoint, that's something they do really well. And people get, you know, uh, disturbed by electronic controls. This has electronic stabilizer bars. It has electronic turbo wastegates. It has electronic turbo bypass valves. So much is electronically controlled and that starts to make people angry. They say, oh, it won't be reliable, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, if you do implement all these electronic aids and you actually put in the time 
to tune them correctly for the vehicle. You can have a level of refinement that you generally don't find uh, in, in cars that are going to cost significantly less than that. And that's what's very cool about it. If the time goes into actually tuning it properly, the level of refinement is absurd and you notice that with this car. It is exceptionally good as a driver's car and the responsiveness uh, is very cool. Speaking of electronic control, one of the things I didn't mention about the manual transmission, if you do get the manual transmission, you switch over to a mechanical limited slip rear differential instead of the electronic uh, limited slip differential in the rear, which comes with the 8-speed PDK. Uh, and then also with that uh, manual transmission and the rear, you're going to use torque vectoring through the brakes. Now they do that in combination with the mechanical limited slip diff. Now generally I prefer mechanical style limited slip differentials. I think they're a bit more predictable. I've pushed this through some corners and I haven't really felt that weirdness that you can sometimes get with electronic diffs like I've felt with, for example, the Cadillac ATS-V. Uh, I feel like the rear end was really twitchy on that with the electronic diff. Um, this one seems to do a good job. If it were me, I'd certainly go with the manual transmission, the mechanical diff. One complaint from a driver's perspective here, when you're looking at your gauges here, two of them are cut off so I can't see the time and the temperature outside it's completely cut off by the wheel blocking it and then I can't see my coolant temperature as well as my fuel gauge because it's completely blocked off by the steering wheel so you have to either look like this like this to see it uh, it's, it's strange that they have gauges that are completely 100% covered by the steering wheel um, and then I have the wheel all the way out too so if I put it all the way in it actually starts to cover up the speed limit as well uh, the speed that you're going there's still a digital one in the center so you'll still know what speed you're going uh, but it's weird how much this steering wheel covers up of the display in front of it it is a nice small wheel uh, and I like that it's small it feels good uh, it's just covering up half your displays overall impression the car is fantastic. The price tag feels high. $180,000. Again, that's turbo territory. There's a lot of sweet cars in the 180k range, though there is a lot of practicality of this. I like that the rear seats fold down. You've got actually useful space right here. There's a nice large front trunk. Uh, so there are practical aspects of it. I like that it still has great visibility. I like how refined everything is. So there are certainly advantages that Porsche offers uh, that you might not find in every vehicle in this price range, but $180,000, this is the most expensive Porsche I've ever driven. Uh, and that's that's a lot of coin for, for what you're getting. Um, you know, a three liter turbocharged engine isn't the wildest thing out there. You're, you're really paying for the refinement, the, the ride quality, um, and some of the smaller features like that that you know make it feel very daily drivable but not quite exotic wild thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave them below